We're here in the middle of nowhere in Poland at freezing temperatures searching for Europe's largest land animal. We're using antennas and special goggles because these giants are actually masters of camouflage. They have been completely extinct 100 years ago, but since have made their surprising comeback, the European bison. We are Planet Wild, a community of people that care deeply about nature and the planet. And today, we're on a mission to protect bisons using technology. This is the giant European bison known locally as the Vicent. It's the largest animal on the continent, and since prehistoric times, it has shared the land peacefully with humankind. But unrestrained hunting has brought these gentle creatures to complete extinction in the wild, 100 years ago. Now, rewilding experts are trying to reintroduce them into nature. But can they be successful? We made it our mission to bring our ancient friends back, and we'll use modern day technology to protect them from their number one threat, humans. Große Aufregung um den erschossenen Wiesent. Wiesents grow taller than humans and weigh as much as a car. Despite their mass, they could outrun me by a factor of three and jump over my head with ease. While this might sound scary, you'll be glad to hear that bisons are very peaceful animals, living on a strictly vegan diet and posing no threat to humans or other animals. You know, I remember when I was uh, once invited to the conference in Germany, uh, some 20 years ago, and the first question I was asked, how many people are killed by European bison every year in Poland? When I said zero, they started laughing. They, they couldn't believe me at, at the first moment. Unlike its close cousin, the American bison, which prefers wide prairies, the European bison loves browsing and grazing in forests and areas of mixed vegetation, eating shrubs, twigs and grass. And this feeding pattern makes them what's called ecosystem engineers, because they literally help rebuild our ecosystems from the ground up. So if we manage towards the protection of European bison, automatically there will be many other species that will also do pretty well in areas where we have a good population of European bison. So they are a bit of a shortcut for conservation. Um, if you manage for these large animals, that's often really good for biodiversity in general. Their foraging style creates a mosaic of open soil patches and vegetation clearings at different stages of growth. This allows a whole variety of new plant and animal species to explode onto the scene. For example, it can create space for flowering bushes inside forests, which attracts insects, which bring in new species of birds, then small mammals, and so on and so forth. Isn't it amazing to see how the largest animals provide nourishment for the tiniest organisms? Biodiversity is about understanding that it's all connected. So why did these giant animals completely vanish from Europe? Because much like in America, bison once roamed the European lowlands over large distances, spanning from Iberia to Scandinavia, from the Atlantic coast to the Caspian Sea. Estimates of the historic population range from hundreds of thousands to possibly millions. So how could it go to zero? Bison have been hunted as a source of food since hunter-gatherer times, but their range really started to decline when overhunting was mixed with expansion of agriculture which caused large-scale deforestation, which then resulted in a steadily shrinking habitat over many, many centuries. And then World War I broke out and brought a surge in bison hunting for hide, meat and horns on an already endangered population. At the end of it, only two small herds remained. One group of nine animals survived in Białowieża forest in the eastern corner of Poland, until the last of them was eventually killed in 1921. The other herd was hiding away in the remote mountains of Western Caucasus, where another six years later, poachers found and shot the very last European bison to exist in the wild. But all was not lost yet, because a few animals were still alive in zoos, and almost immediately, early conservationists started a breeding program that released the first two captive bred bison back into Bielawetscha forest in 1929. A small hope. Until the 1960s, the population slowly climbed up to 100. But for decades following, the range remained small, restricted to eastern Poland and still very much threatened. That's why, in 2002, our partner Maciek and his team from Setepe in Poland 
started a large-scale rewilding program to allow the population to increase their habitat all the way to Western Poland with amazing success. They are now counting over 400 animals in Western Poland alone, spreading all the way up to the Baltic Sea and all the way west, now approaching the German border. European bison have been a part of our landscapes in Germany and Europe for a very, very long time. And we should feel really lucky that they are still around, that they have not gone extinct, and that we have the opportunity to restore them in our forests. That doesn't mean that European bison have to be in every forest everywhere in Germany, but in some places, if we are successful in restoring them there, we are really making a contribution to conservation. We are helping to restore ecosystems and we provide opportunities for people to, to really see and experience these fantastic animals that at the moment we just don't have. But help is still needed. Because with all the good they do to our ecosystems and the incredible comeback that they have made, the bison is still under threat. A while ago, a bison bull made his way further west than any of his peers before. He swam through the river Oder, crossed the Polish-German border and became the first free bison to do so in a century. What could have become a success story of nature finding its way ended in tragedy. Große Aufregung um den erschossenen Wiesen. Die Nachricht gestern schlägt heute immer höhere Wellen. German local authorities were so scared and overwhelmed that they shot and killed the bison after only a few hours. This story highlights that humans are still the biggest threat to bison in the wild. Whether that's because of fear, poaching, or most commonly through human wildlife conflicts around land use. Because the presence of bison can challenge existing farming methods, which have been used for hundreds of years. And that is a legitimate concern to address and get right. The sad truth is that we have forgotten how to share the landscape with large wild mammals. And so, a bit of adoption is required, actually from both sides. On the one hand, humans can learn to overcome their fears and appreciate the gentle nature and ecosystem services that bison provide. But also bison are able to learn to safely navigate the land in between human settlements and agricultural fields as they slowly continue their expansion across the continent. And that's why we're here, at Grafsky Park at freezing temperatures in the middle of winter with boxes full of wildlife rescue tech and about to go off-road. We have partnered with Maciek and his team to scout for a wild bison herd to prepare them for peaceful contact with human settlements once they roam closer to farmland and villages. The plan is easy to explain, but much harder to carry out. Simply put, all we need to do is teach a herd not to graze on agricultural fields. We do that by gently spooking them away whenever they do. Since they value grazing in peace, they will naturally start to stay clear of these places and conflict is avoided. And because they're such social animals, they actually pass on that learned behavior from generation to generation. Magic has shown first success with this method in the past. If we can help establish it further, this model has the potential to make rewilding successful globally. But in order to do that, Magic's team needs to be able to constantly monitor the position of bison herds to know when and where such interventions are needed. And this is where our technology comes in. We're supplying Magic's team with custom-made bison trackers. This is not some off-the-shelf product. It's extremely durable, can withstand shock, extreme temperatures, and importantly, can send a signal for five years on one battery charge. With this, ZPP can monitor a herd's movement precisely, then get out into the field on short notice and nudge them away from settlements when they get too close. But first, we need to find a wild bison herd and equip them with the device. And this is where our journey into the wild begins. We've left the road behind and are now on foot. Temperatures are well below zero, but the movement keeps us warm. And already the effort is rewarded with abundant sights of the beautiful landscape that is Pomerian, Switzerland. After a while, we spotted first traces. Bison love to rub against trees for cleaning, leaving behind patches of hair that actually have a not too bad smell to them. But this is not necessarily a recent trace. It could be weeks old in fact, so we move on. Only a bit later, we're seeing something much more exciting. All right, guys, we're getting really close now. See these hoof traces? They're as big as my hand, which is kind of scary. And this piece of bison dung here is actually really, really fresh. That means a bison herd has been roaming through here very, very recently. So we should get really, really close. I have to say, I start feeling a bit nervous at this moment. I don't know if that's for fear or excitement, 
but I was really hoping to be able to see a bison in the wild for the first time in my life. So here's an interesting fact. Despite their size, it can often be really hard to spot a bison in the forest. Seems odd, right? They are the largest animal on the continent after all. But surprisingly, they can be very quiet and are really well camouflaged in forest environments. What's more, if they hear us first and get spooked, we will never be able to catch them. Luckily, we have another tech trick up our sleeve. We've equipped Maciek and his team with a state-of-the-art thermal camera that makes any warm body clearly visible from afar. This device allows them to spot hidden animals deep into the forest and then approach them carefully. Without it, tracking a herd can take hours if not days, wasting precious time and the limited resources that ZTP has. Okay folks, Maciek is onto something, he just gave me a signal. It could actually be a bison. We went further in, slowly advancing through the winter forest. And then, there it was. Not one, but a whole herd of bison, clearly visible on the thermal camera. Carefully, we were able to approach them closer. I was in complete awe. Right there was the entire herd. And there were many, at least 60 of them. The camera can't do justice to the sheer size and the aura of these animals. Please note that approaching wild bison like this is only possible because we're with experts. If you're lucky enough to see a bison in the wild, be sure to keep a respectful distance so you do not disturb it. We'll shoot a tranquilizer dart at this bison cow so that we can get close and attach the tracking device. Bison live in matriarchal herds, so it's the females that are taking the lead. And don't worry, the cow won't feel a thing. It will just fall asleep for a few hours. Can't believe we're able to get so close to this gentle giant right here. Its body is emitting warmth, it's breathing heavily but steadily. Right now it's hopefully having sweet dreams, but in an hour or so it will be up and running again. Behind me you can see how the team is preparing the tracking device. And as you can see as well, this is actually very, very manual and laborious work. It's not an easy feat to do what these guys are doing every day. We went on to equip two more cows with trackers that same day. To have extra backup and assure the herd will be monitored even in the case of any one tracker failing. Only then is the job truly done. All right, let's retreat. We made it back to the cars before nightfall. Time for hot drinks and a much anticipated signal check. The trackers send a signal every few hours and the first ping should be coming in any minute now. And then there it was. Oh yes! <laughs> the first bison is sending a clear and strong signal. Shortly after, we could see that all three animals were transmitting and had continued their journey through the wild. The only thing that was left for us was to head back to civilization, knowing that these little blips on the screen now allow us to safeguard an entire herd of European bison on their path as they do their thing and make this world a little wilder. The impact of the tech we sponsored goes well beyond what you saw today. ZTP is working with a small headcount and limited public funding, if any. All while the success of their work so far means ever-growing animal numbers to Shepherd. Better tech helps them do that more effectively and scale their impact for many, many years to come. And this concludes our first mission. I'm very happy with what we have achieved, but this was just the beginning. We are building a global community of people that care deeply about nature and want to help our planet bounce back through missions like these. We'd like to thank our very early backers who made this first mission possible. Here are their names. And this spring, we're launching our public membership so that you can join our missions as a backer as well. The bigger our community grows, the bigger these missions will get. Every member can vote on how we spend the money, connect with us and other members through our app and Discord channel, and collect unique badges for every mission you support. Here's the first one, rightfully earned by our first backers. Thank you to my co-founder Jonas for designing the Bison Badge. With the upcoming missions, there will be more of those to collect for everyone joining. If you want to get notified when we launch or help us beta test our new app, sign up with the link in the description. If you want to share some love and help us build up this channel, leave a like and let us know your feedback in the comments. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Over and out.